The Surface Laptop 7 is one of the best laptops I've ever used, and I recommend it for practically anyone who isn't a creator. It's a great laptop that lives up to many of Microsoft's claims, but it's not exactly the creator laptop they've been marketing. Maybe in the future, but definitely not in its current state. In my opinion, the best thing about this laptop is its design. It's sleek, simple, and feels like a premium, durable device. On the left side, it has two USB-C ports and a single USB-A port, as well as the headphone jack. On the right side, it has the port for the surface charger and a micro SD slot. The keyboard and touchpad match the color of the chassis you end up going with, and the keyboard feels very nice and the keys all have very good travel distance. So the touchpad now has a haptic motor instead of a click. So the motors detect the amount of force being applied to the surface and then give you feedback. In the settings, you can also tweak the touchpad to your liking, like sensitivity and feedback. And the new touchpad overall is a very welcome upgrade. And another welcome upgrade is the new beautifully rounded corners on the display. It's an LCD that gets plenty bright and has great contrast. And it no longer supports the surface pen, but it still has a touch screen. And the three to two aspect ratio is something I didn't know I would like so much. I normally use a dual monitor setup and both monitors are a 16 by nine aspect ratio. But this, especially since I've mainly used it as a single screen, feels a lot nicer. It's nice having a taller screen for productivity and splitting applications across the screen. I will say though that the screen is extremely reflective. Obviously, that's just a thing with displays, but this one even more because of the touchscreen element. I'm not normally someone who wishes for a matte coating on a display, but this is the one time that I would actually offer one if there was a choice, but there isn't. And it is very reflective. I found myself often trying to find the right angle to minimize the reflections in the room or just in the environment. It wasn't this bad on the Surface Pro with the OLED that I just tested, but on this LCD, it's it's very bad. It's, it's, it's okay, it's not unbearable, but it's very noticeable. And it's a shame because the LCD, despite it not being an OLED, still looks really good. But that's one of the drawbacks. It's a very reflective screen, and that's partly because it's also just touch screen. The performance on this is actually very good. For apps that can run natively on Windows on ARM, they're snappy, quick, and generally a pleasure to run. On paper, these devices are great, and I ran a Geekbench for those people who wanna see, but I'm really gonna talk about just what it was like in real world use instead. It's clear that the Snapdragon chips are very powerful, and honestly, for general tasks, if you didn't know that this was an ARM-based chip, you wouldn't question if someone told you it was an AMD or an Intel chip. Honestly, they're that good. For stuff like web-based applications, the Microsoft 365 suite, listening to Spotify, Discord, and stuff of that nature, it has really, really good performance. And it's very efficient at doing these because the battery life is really good also. Like, great actually. And I'll touch more on that shortly. But like I said, mostly for productivity tasks and apps that run natively on the machine. Because unlike Microsoft's claims that their Prism emulator is gonna be as great as Apple's Rosetta 2, Many apps, especially games, just don't run well, if at all, on this device. And there's actually two creativity apps that I tested and they work just fine. That's Photoshop and Lightroom. And guess what? These are both running natively on Windows on ARM. So that gives me hope that as more developers get on board, the experience will just get better and better. If most of your creative work revolves around these two apps, uh, Lightroom and Photoshop, and then you also need a machine for productivity, this is a very good choice for you. Major video editing software like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve just aren't there yet. I mean, Premiere Pro doesn't even have an app yet, despite it being announced that it is coming to Windows on ARM. We don't have a release date for that. And Resolve is still in beta and just doesn't run very well at all. But a big part of the Windows appeal is gaming. And when Microsoft's own game store doesn't support games on the device, unless it's just on the cloud, it sets a bad precedent for other devs. You can run some indie games, but modern games are just not going to run well or just not work at all after installation. But if you're one of those people that likes to play older, less demanding games, or maybe indie games that don't have major kernel level anti-cheats, there is an option for automatic super resolution, which will upscale your game's resolution using AI and can give you some extra frames on gaming. I gotta mention though, that this isn't available on all resolutions. The height of the resolution has to be below 900 lines. You can get some extra frames while gaming, but really this is not a gaming machine and it's, if it ever will be, it's not there right now. 
So this is a test for the camera and the mic quality. And I'm gonna talk about the battery life on this while you decide if you're happy with the video and audio quality of the device um, that you're hearing now. So battery life is definitely one of the strengths for this device. Um, by the way, I do have the feature that keeps my eyes looking at the camera, even though I'm reading from my script here, but just so you're aware, um, if it looks creepy, then you know you can decide if you like that or not. If you'd rather just have it off, but if it, if it looks fine, then it looks fine. It's easily gonna get 12 hours of use from browsing the web, consuming content, Discord, listening to music on Spotify. And by the way, doing all this, I usually have my Bluetooth headphones connected. I don't keep them on for the whole 12 hours, but you know, they come on and off because that's just how I use it. But if you're a general purpose user, there's not much to say about the battery life except that it's really good and you'll love it. Um, whenever you try to handle some other tasks or other applications that aren't optimized for this, which I really didn't try to do too much because whenever I did test it, it just wasn't ideal. It's just, they were either sluggish or just not worth the trouble going back and forth. But I assume that you'd obviously get more battery drain since, not, since it's not optimized for this. But just so you know, you also do have the Microsoft Studio effects, which allow you to use uh, the reframe feature, um, the eye contact feature like I'm, I have on right now, and then background, background blur, which I'll show you. This is portrait, this is standard, and then you have some other creative filters like watercolor. <clears throat> um, but yeah, oh, there you go. So I clicked on accident on my wall and it, uh, it exposes for whatever you click on. So right now it's on my face. If I click my wall over here, it'll expose. Actually, let me turn this off. So I click this wall, it exposes for that. Click my light over here, it exposes for that. And if I just click on my face, there you go. It's it's a pretty good camera. I mean, it's not a freak, it's not this. You can see it's not that, but you know, conferences and stuff like that, it gets the job done. I'm a little bit disappointed in how Microsoft priced these laptops, in particular when you start to spec it out because the base model for $999, it's a good deal, but they start with a base of 16 gigabytes of RAM, but then to spec it up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, which is the next option up, it's an extra $400. That's $400 for 16 extra gigabytes of RAM. Sure, you also get a one terabyte SSD instead of a 512 gigabyte SSD, but they don't even give you the option to upgrade RAM for a cheaper price without upgrading the storage. You just have to upgrade for $400 if you want the 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. And then if you want to upgrade from 32 gigabytes of RAM to 64, that's another $400. So $800 to go from 16 to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Look, Apple does this too, and it's also annoying when they do it, but considering Windows generally takes up more memory for tasks, and even Apple users complain that the base eight gigabytes of RAM should be 16 instead of eight, it feels like the amount should be more for this laptop, at least for the X Elite variants, or just priced more reasonably when you're trying to upgrade. Most people hold on to their devices for three to four years at least, right? And it would be nice for to future-proof your device and get at least 32 gigabytes of RAM as some extra cushion, but for $400 or $800 to max out, I mean, look, you can decide if the value this will add to your work is worth the price, but if you want 32 gigabytes of RAM on your device, it starts at $19.99 for the 13 inch model or $20.99 for the 15 inch. Unlike the two in one Surface Pro that I reviewed previously, it was much easier to recommend that thanks to its unique ability to run a full desktop OS in a tablet. This new Surface laptop is competing in the notebooks category and it doesn't have many distinguishing advantages over Apple's MacBooks which really have been the gold standard for efficiency, battery life, and power. Sure, it might outperform in some benchmarks like multi-core performance, but in the real world where it matters, there's a lot of apps that you just can't access, which defeats the purpose of all that power. And yes, the hardware this time around is impressive, but software matters too. And a lot of applications just aren't there yet. Unless you just don't want to run Mac OS, if you're more than just a casual user, it's likely that the MacBook is a better option for you. If you're just a casual user and focus mostly on content consumption, web-based tasks, Microsoft Suite like Word, Excel, and other productivity apps, this machine is really good for that. And if you do use it for that kind of stuff, you have the advantage of a 120 hertz display and a touch screen. Unlike its direct competitor, the MacBook Air, which is stuck at 60 hertz still, and obviously has no touch screen. Just remember, 
This is a very reflective screen, but you get a touchscreen on it. With that being said, to be completely honest, this is not a laptop for the professional. Not in its current state, at least. Many popular creative apps haven't been optimized for Windows on ARM, and others like DaVinci Resolve are sluggish and have many hiccups because they're still in beta. A few like Photoshop and Lightroom run well, but that's just two of many apps. And with time, I'm sure things will get more optimized for ARM, but as of now, they're not. And I recommend that you look at Qualcomm's list of apps on their website to see if the ones you need are supported. I'll link it below. But for the average user, however, this laptop is amazing. It's stellar. The webcam for meetings and conferences is good. The display for general tasks and content consumption is good. And the battery is also really good. So it is a good laptop for the right person. There is a lot of potential here, but it's not quite there yet. And it's not a bad machine by any means. I mean, I think that anyone that just doesn't want to be a part of the Apple ecosystem will be happy with this purchase. As long as your work doesn't require apps that aren't optimized for ARM yet, which is a lot of them, but there are people out there that just might not need those apps. But the thing is that Microsoft is heavily marketing these devices towards creatives, but no content creator, unless you only use Photoshop or Lightroom, will be satisfied with this in its current state. So they should have leaned towards what they've been dominating in forever, gaming, but they didn't. So for the longest time, one of the biggest reasons people get Windows devices over a MacBook is for gaming. And in its current state, like I said, it's just not there. And it's a shame that Microsoft didn't do a better job at optimizing gaming with the launch of these devices with Windows on ARM, but that's just a reality. And the Prism emulator just isn't up to par with Apple's Rosetta 2, which they claimed it would be, but clearly it isn't. And if you're someone that isn't fixed on Windows or Mac, then I would still recommend a MacBook Air or even a MacBook Pro over this because of app compatibility. And in its current state, Mac OS just has so many apps available that Windows on ARM just doesn't. And yes, I am aware that there are other Windows on ARM devices that have launched alongside this one, but those are still, regardless of their performance, are still going to run into the same compatibility issues, which is why I'm recommending a MacBook and not another Windows device. When Apple switched to ARM in 2020, they had the luxury of controlling all of the hardware, so it was much easier for developers to jump on board. Because unlike Windows, which has the conflict of being on either ARM or x86, Apple just went full throttle and pushed for ARM. AMD and Intel are still making their own chips, so it's hard to tell what the future will look like in terms of how fast devs will hop on board. I will say though that this time around, the push for Windows on ARM seems to be much more than previous times uh, when Microsoft has tried. And on top of that, I don't think they have a choice now if they want a fighting chance against Apple. Like if they can at least improve the emulation experience so that apps that aren't native can at least run, even if it takes a hit on performance, it would be a lot easier to recommend this laptop for users that need it for a little bit more than just productivity. However, never buy a product on its promise, as we all know, and in its current state, if all the good that the laptop offers doesn't outweigh the bad for you, consider getting another device. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.